Hi, everybody. Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control Houston. I'm sitting next to astronaut Ron Garen. We're going to be talking about uh, one of the, I think, one of the cooler aspects of spaceflight is something that's very interesting. You know, over the past 50 years, while astronauts have been flying, I think one of the more remarkable things is that pictures of our own planet have been so powerful. And I'm not, I'm not sure that was expected, but you think back to some of the more iconic imagery of Apollo, the, uh, you know, the Earthrise and the, the, uh, the blue marble that Apollo 17 took. And it's been our own planet, which is really sort of taking people's breath away, hasn't it? And I think that was a big surprise. I think, you know, we went to the moon to discover the moon, and I think yeah. we, we discovered ourselves in the process. And I think it's a, it's a really, um, really important part of space exploration is to be able to not only capture what we're doing uh, in space, but also to capture what's happening on the ground, what's happening here on Earth. And it really gives us a, a unique perspective to do that. Yeah, we're going to start taking a look at some of the pictures that Ron and his crew gapped, uh, captured back during Expeditions 27 and 28, correct? 27 and 28, I, I want to make right. sure I have my numbers <laughs> right. So let's take a look at them real quick on the screen, and we'll talk about some of these. Uh, so that is... This is uh, the North Island of New Zealand, and actually um, the signif significance of this to me is that, that this was the first picture that I tweeted from space. Oh, wow. And um, that is a really, you know, a very, very powerful um, tool that we have to interact with, with people on the ground. And this, uh, this particular picture, I think, got like about 120,000 views in the first 24 hours. Um, it was retweeted by the White House, and it, was, yeah. it, it generated a lot of buzz. And it's a, it's a way for us to, to really bring people along on our mission, not just as spectators, but as fellow crewmates, because we can interact w with uh, people on the ground. And, and it really um, opens up a, a whole new way of interaction for us. Yeah, let's take a look at the next one. This is, okay. I think, this is Botswana? Is this, is, uh, this is Botswana, that's right. That's the uh, uh, Akavango uh, Delta. And, you know, this is, this is one of the, the, the most recognizable um, features on the ground when you look back at the Earth. There's a, there's a number of places around the world that when you look at it, you know instantly where you are. And this is Botswana, and it's, um, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful scene. It, it, it's in the middle, you know, if we panned back, you'd see nothing but desert for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles. And so this is a, a, a gigantic oasis. You know, that skinny part on the left is, is about six miles wide. Wow. The whole thing is about 100 miles long, uh, and it is, it, it contains incredible biodiversity. This, you know, this is a perfect example that water is life, and, and this water right here in the middle of the uh, otherwise uh, desert uh, is home to, you know, an enormous amount of species mm -hmm. of animals, and, um, you know, it really is is striking from from, uh, from space. And to me, um, from space, it looks like this giant paintbrush on the ground, so it's and pretty... It's such a contrast between everything that was around it. It looks like nothing, exactly. and then there's, there's this life and everything in the middle. Let's talk about something that you guys call Earth Glow, right? And yeah. And next yeah. picture, I think, is Australia that we've got on here. Um, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's a picture. Uh, I, I believe Mike Fossum took this picture of me in the cupola there. On the right, you can see the cupola. And um, p a lot of people, when they see these pictures, a lot of the time lapse has this air gl glow effect in it. And uh, people mistake that for the atmosphere, the limits of the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is, is significantly thinner than that. So if yeah. you look at that air glow and you look to the left, uh, the the dark part between the green and the earth is the atmosphere. Wow. Uh, so that's how paper thin it is, and it really is sobering to think that that paper thin layer is all that protects every living thing on, on earth. And uh, this is over coastal Australia. I believe that city down there is Sydney. I'm not yeah. exactly positive about that, but this is a good um, shot that shows how we get these, sh how, how we get these pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is basically the, the uh, spot uh, of choice on the space station to take pictures because it has such a great view and, it, and you could see out on the horizon and you know, you know, we're not taking shots just straight down you yeah. know, at, the, at the Earth. The yeah, and it's, it's important, I think, for a number of reasons. And, and one is that it, it helps us to capture some, some of the emotion that you have when you're up there. Now, we take all these pictures in our free time. We're not scheduled um, normally to, to take pictures yeah. of the Earth. And so it's um, something that we like to do. You know, there's scientific reasons uh, for, for taking these pictures. We like to document the effects of, of human impact on the environment, of, of natural disasters. and um, But also, we want to capture the human experience of being in space and sometimes uh, you know a, a place like the cupola allows us to do that I think that's why it gets the attention that it does yeah. you know so let's take a look you did a spacewalk or a few actually let's, this is you um, again Mike Fossum took this picture um, and this is this is not intended to be an earth ops picture <laughs> but it but it actually is so you could see uh, Qatar and I'm actually standing right over Saudi Arabia and you can see Bahrain and and um, Iran off to to the right um, beautiful shot of uh, of an you know that part of the world, and um, 
you know, it's, <laughs> it really you know gives you the, the the impression that we're standing on top of the world. And do it's, uh, do you get a sense of how high up you are when you do this? I mean, or do you, do you look down and go, uh, I, I hope I don't fall? I mean, I know obviously you can't. We, but we it, are falling. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're, but we're also traveling five miles a second, so we're okay. So, but. Um, no, I think you know. For for me, you you understand how high above the the world yeah. you are, and um, it just gives you this tremendous view. And um, you're not worried about falling down to the earth because, like I said, we are falling down to the earth. You you are concerned, and your concentration is on floating away from the station yeah. and and making sure that that doesn't happen. So that's the, that's the big concern. Let's take a look at this next picture. This is a uh, I think 135 that we've got on here. Now that the is. question I've got about this is that you know you guys took these photos both because they're spectacular, but there's also a, a, a an engineering reason that you took pictures of the shuttle's right. heat shield. But you know people don't realize that you know you guys don't use just point and shoot cameras uh, on board the space. These are actually high end professional level cameras. You have to get trained on. You have to become almost a professional level photographer. Yeah, I mean, we do get a, a lot of training, and this is a, a shot right before we did the RPM, so yeah. this rotation maneuver that allows us to take very detailed um, technical pictures of the, the heat shield underneath uh, the shuttle. And this is Atlantis on its on its last mission, the last mission of, of the of the space shuttle program, and uh, we were getting set up for the RPM, and, and we flew right over the Bahamas, and that's uh, Long Island to the right, um, and Exuma Island to the left. You can see progress uh, in the view, and I actually I purposely framed that so you can get a sensation that we're taking that from the from the um, space mm -hmm. station and you know I just look down as we're getting set up we're you know getting ready it's a very uh, uh, choreographed type of uh, event yeah. trying to get these pictures and as we're getting set up I saw that that view and just said oh we hold there on a second yeah. we got to take that picture right there so yeah. that was that was really uh, uh, that's one of my favorite shuttle pictures now you've been very active on Twitter uh, you, tw you tweet out quite a bit of pictures while you were up there let's take a look at some of these I think these are some fires over uh, South Africa if I'm not mistaken um, th actually the whole not not just South Africa the whole southern continent oh, wow. of Africa and this is um, th these are not, I don't believe these are wild Fires. These are, I think, uh, just periodic uh, seasonal yeah. crop burning. But what really struck me of this picture was that the, the smoke w engulfed the entire atmosphere, all the way up to the limits of space. And um, this is not, um, you know, only in Africa. I mean, all around the world, you see this at different different seasons. Uh, you'll see the, the crops uh, starting to be burned, and it really has has a tremendous effect. It basically, like I said, fills up the entire atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, and, and in this case, you know, a whole part of a, of a very large continent was completely engulfed in, in smoke, as far as you could see. And you only get that perspective whenever you get actually off <coughs> the planet and take a look down below and, and, and see exactly how these things that are, you know, affecting a continent at, right, at that point, right. you know. Right. So, all right, hurricanes are always popular. I think we've got a shot of Hurricane Irene, if I'm not, and there it is. Yeah, this is uh, Hurricane Irene. We took this picture. You could see Cuba there in the in the foreground, and um, you know hurricanes are scary even from space. And this is uh, right before it made landfall. Uh, I think I think it was about 120 mile an hour winds. Winds. It was a Cat 3 hurricane at the wow. time. It uh, went up the whole east coast of the U.S. And I've got a whole series of of these pictures uh, as it was coming, um, uh, making landfall. I made it several landfalls actually. And it, what's interesting about this is you could see the calm before the storm. I mean. I have a picture of New York uh, right before it, it got there. You could, you know, it was a, you could see it's a crystal clear day in New York City, yeah. and then right offshore you could see Irene barreling down, and, yeah. it's, and it really is. Uh, in that particular picture, you don't really get a, a good sense of the eye of, of the hurricane, but a lot of times we do capture uh, the eye, and and it really um, looks pretty scary from space. We we had three uh, hurricanes while we were up there, wow. and one of the things that we really tried to do is it was kept, uh, capture time lapse photography mm -hmm. of the hurricane, so you could see some of the movement of it, and I think that was really uh, a good tool to show, um, you know, help with the projections and, and also, uh, you know, to have people on the ground take this serious. Hey, you know, yeah. you, if you're getting an evacuation order, you might want to take this serious. This is, a, this is a pretty big one. Well, and, you know, one thing about the hurricane pictures, you know, we've got satellites to take pictures of these. I think there's something... Uh, that captures people's uh, attention whenever a human takes the picture. It's, it's, it's a little bit different because it's like they're experiencing it with you, you know, from your vantage point. Right, right, exactly. And it's interesting, you know, you feel, uh, at the same time you feel detached when you're living for months and months in, in space, but at the same time you feel more connected because we could, you know, watch on the news, you know, we do get the news up there, watch about a, yeah. a wildfire or a hurricane or, or some type of conflict ar around the world and go, oh, we're going to fly over that in five minutes, let's yeah. go take a look. And so you feel more connected because you can see it with your own eyes, um, wow. even though you're in this disconnected world of, of, the, of the International Space Station. Yeah, well, let's take a look at our home state. We've got one from Texas. I think okay. these are some fires burning 
Uh, yeah, here. we've got some. We've got a lot of fire wildfires burning now, right as we speak, uh, around the world, and, and certainly in our own country. And uh, this was um, during a period of where in Texas we had a, a lot of wildfires and uh, did a tremendous amount of damage. And again, you know, natural disasters from space. Since you get to see such a wide, you know, area and see see the the um, the effect of that those area, you know, the wide um, part of the part of the view there, it's it really is is very impressive and. Very very um, uh, concerning. Which part of Texas is this that we're looking at? So I, I, this is uh, East Texas, actually. Um, it's uh, not far from Shreveport, I believe. Um, so I'm, I'm actually not even convinced that's a, one of the wildfire pictures. But um, it, it, it's a random it, fire. I, I think it is a, a random fire. But it's at the same on the same day that there was some significant fires. I think in the Bostra, uh, Bastrop area of Texas. Well, I'm from East Texas. We tend to build big fires in East Texas. Yeah. <laughs> part of the world. All right, last picture. Let's take a look at Libya uh, real quick. This, yeah. is, this is striking to me just because of the color. It is. It is striking for the color and the beauty. And and but what what you don't realize out of this picture is this is the day that Tripoli fell. Wow. And so this is an example of one of those times where you're watching the news. Yeah. Um, during, usually we'd watch the news during lunch as we're eating our lunch and and realize that Tripoli just fell and hey we're going to fly over that in a few minutes. Let's take some pictures. And you can see. I mean it looks very beautiful and peaceful and tranquil. Yeah. And you don't realize what's raging below in that in that picture. It's uh, really. Uh, quite a contradiction, a sobering contradiction. Uh, you know, the question I've got is the, the colors that you see here. I mean, it, it, do these cameras actually capture what you're seeing with your own eyes? I, I, I think they do. I think they do. There's, uh, there's um, parts of the world that are just very, very unique in the colors that you see. The Bahamas, um, you know, jump out yeah. um, almost like ne this neon glowing jewel uh, out in the middle of the ocean. Um, the, the Himalayas uh, are the same way. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it really, really is striking. Um, the, the difference in colors and, and watching the colors change too. They don't. They, I mean, they change as you're watching them, but they, there's also also seasonal changes as yeah. well. And we could watch that line of of the, the colors of the of the leaves changing. You know, yeah. go from south to north or north to south, depending on which hemisphere you're in, and just watch that uh, happening over the weeks and months is really really interesting to see. It we almost gives you the sense that we have this living, breathing organism that we yeah. live on. We, we tend to stay very green or brown here in Houston. We That's don't really right. get the we don't really That's get right. the fall leaves <laughs> yeah. anything down here. So, well, tell everybody what. Your Twitter account is so they can follow you. Oh, it's uh, at Astro underscore Ron. At Astro underscore Ron. <laughs> so follow along with Ron. He's always uh, tweeting out some interesting photos and, and observations on, yeah, on thanks everything. Thanks for the plug. On. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Ron Garrett, astronaut here. Of course, if you'd like to take a look at all these photos that you saw, you follow Ron on Twitter or you can log on to the NASA website at www.nasa.gov slash station. There's literally hundreds of thousands of photos out there. So uh, so you can even find your hometown on there if you, if you look very carefully. So thanks again, Ron. We'll thanks, see you later. Josh. Appreciate it.